the Word of God is true, and we can stand on the Word of God, His promises, and know that He is faithful. Do you know that this book has at least 1,500 promises alone on healing? Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not going to spend the time giving you all the references at this point. <laughs> one is sufficient. If God gives us one promise of healing, that should be sufficient. But as I understand it from those who have gone from cover to cover and have traced down all the references on healing, there's about 1,500 of them. Now, how many more do we need? Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 53, and we call Isaiah the miniature gospel. Isaiah was a prophet who spoke forth those things of the coming of Jesus Christ. And verse 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And as I understand it, griefs here are also pains, sicknesses, and or diseases. Let's look at it again. I've got to read it again. Verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, with this particular portion of Scripture, let's also turn to Psalms 103 and verse 3. Well, we might even look at verses 1 and 2 with that. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth a few of your iniquities and heals only a smidgen of your diseases. Maybe one if you're really good. <laughs> if you make yourself worthy and deserving of it, maybe, just maybe, you'll get healed. You must go to church three times on Sunday. You must obey all Ten Commandments. You must live 100% correct in everything you do. And then maybe you'll be worthy enough to be healed. Well, my Bible doesn't say that. My Bible says this. And no wonder the psalmist could say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name, who forgives all thine iniquities and who heals all thy diseases. What is the definition of the word all? Well, if you want to go into the dictionary, which as I say, even take the simple words and look up their meaning, and uh, you know, you can't err. Either we believe the word of God or we don't. Either it's factual and says what it says or it doesn't. All, if he forgives all of our iniquities, all means totally and inclusive. If I talk about all of us here, I am not leaving anyone out, not even one of the cameramen. All means all means everybody. Not one is left out. We have no problem at all preaching the sermons and telling the stories, look, come to Jesus, he will forgive you of all your sins. And we believe it, don't we? Sure, we believe it. We come to the foot of the cross and we say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. And our burdens are rolled away and we know that he has forgiven us of all of them. And I believe there's someone watching right now who is desiring to know how that can be done. We come to the foot of the cross. We say, Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart and give me a new life. And all of them are washed away and you are a new creature in Christ, and you desire then to live for him. Now, if all means all, and we forgive, get our sins forgiven, 
Does it really mean, I mean, because come on now, does it really mean who heals all thy diseases? Can't be. You see, we've been told for so long that healing isn't for today, and we've been told for so long that, you know, it isn't God's will to heal. And I want to touch on that one too. <laughs> Oh, I just know that there are many who do believe that it's the will of God to stay sick. If I didn't believe that healing was the will of God and healing was not meant for to, healing wasn't meant for today, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't minister to one soul for healing if I didn't believe it was the will of God for that person to be healed. Why go through an act of plain church? Why go through motions? I got a lot of other things to do without playing games, you know? I like to play games when I'm playing games, but you know, when you're out for real, you want to play for real. Oh, bless God. Who healeth all thy diseases. There is something about this that I think I would like to just look at a comment here. I know that this portion can be forced out of context. Let not the Christian expect God to heal him when he is defying God's natural laws, whether it be immoral habits, lustful appetites of the flesh, or just plain gluttony in eating. If one willfully abuses the body, then, of course, we're going to suffer. That body is going to suffer because of it. The Christian cannot defile his body and then expect to offer his body as a living sacrifice. We cannot violate God's laws of health and get by. I'm going to go into this as part of some of the reason why some people are not being healed because they are sick in certain ways or because of certain reasons, they still want to live in doing the things that they're doing when the things actually that they are doing is responsible for their sickness or their disease. And then, of course, they wonder why they're not healed. Well, we've got to look at that one. But I am convinced of this, and if, if we ever touched on any portion of Scripture that was really, we could take it and say, look, he paid the price not only for our sins. But the same price that he died on the cross is the same price for our sicknesses and diseases. The same price. Every time he was beaten over the back, every time he took a scourging, every time somebody spit upon him, and as the nails were put in his hands and the sword in his side, that same price for your sins is the same price that he paid to heal you by the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. And I also know that some people, and even believers have a problem with this one, to believe that Jesus Christ really has forgiven you of all your sins. Because I find many Christians today are still going around with a sense of unforgiveness in their life. Not that they haven't gone to God for forgiveness, but they really feel that they don't deserve to be forgiven because they've done such horrible things and they still don't feel forgiven inside. So therefore, if we can't believe that Jesus Christ paid the price for every one of our sins, then how on earth are we ever going to believe that he has paid the price for all of our sicknesses and diseases? Same thing. Well, let's also turn to John chapter 5. And we want to see here some interesting things. <clears throat> because this is the story of the man who was healed at the pool of Bethsaida. And I'm going to go into some of the reasons why maybe people are not healed today, because I know that this rather interests us. 
And I know that there are those who feel that every sickness and every disease that comes upon our bodies is as a result of some sin in a person's life. There is nothing, nothing worse than to be lying flat on your back with a hot fever. And you're feeling really the pits, you know, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And somebody comes in and says, huh, you know, God shows me. It's, uh, you know, you're, you're sick because you got this fever because you've sinned against God. Now, you make your life right with God, and you get it all right, and then you'll be healed, you know. And their sickness and their disease is caused because some, something was swallowed, a virus, or some, they got in contact with somebody else who had a disease, and they picked up the bug. Well, that's about the size of it. Doctors will tell you that's what happened. I should, I should ask all the doctors who are watching the program to write into me and tell me all the things that some of these people come and say to them that are fanatical statements, and I would love to be able to teach on them just to help those who are making such crazy statements to get them right so we don't bring more, no more reproach on the name of Jesus Christ. And it's high time that we were aware that not every sickness and disease is caused as a result of some sin in our life, but in some cases it is. Let's look at some of these cases. Come on. Here's this man. Uh, there is in Jerusalem, verse 2, the sheep market of pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, I know we discussed this in the gift of the word of knowledge, but as you see, we have to kind of come back to some of these again because uh, there's all these gifts intermingle and overlap. And uh, then you go down to verse 15, and a certain, or five, pardon me, and a certain man, one individual man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. It's a long time. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had now been a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? I repeat, we've already covered this. This is not the part I want to go into at this point. And the impotent man answered him, saying, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise and take up your bed and walk. And the man immediately got up, he was made whole, took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Now, if you go down a little bit further, you will find that the Jews then saw this man and they wondered how come, wanted to find out how come it was that he was healed. And who was it that told you to take up your bed and walk? And the man said, well, it was Jesus. Verse 14, after a word, Jesus found the man that was healed in the temple and said unto him, behold, thou art made whole, sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now, in this particular case, Jesus connected sin with his particular problem, and probably understandably so. Let me give you a couple examples of this. <clears throat> there was a man who had a very serious alcoholic problem. He literally was defiling his body. His liver was being affected, many other parts of his body. He came to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the power of God touched that man, and the actual desire to drink left him. It was a miracle of healing, instantaneous. Some months passed, and this man one day decided that he would like to just try a taste of liquor again, just to taste it. No harm in just tasting it. Couldn't hurt one little drink. And so he took that little drink. And then he took the next little drink, and the next one, and the next one. And it wasn't long, within just a matter of a very short while, the man was laying flat on his back in a hospital bed with a heart attack, and the doctor said it was as a result of too much drinking. Plus, some more of his inner organs were having problems. 
This, to me, is what I believe Jesus is talking about here. This man's habit, which was affecting his body, was literally a sin to his own body and affecting him this way. And he needed to be commissioned then, don't do that anymore. You wanted to be healed from this problem. And your body healed, and your heart healed, and your lungs healed, and your kidneys healed, or whatever the case is. Now you are healed. Go and don't go back and tip the bottle again. Because a worse thing then will come unto you. And so in that case, healing was whatever his problem was. You can take another situation if you want. Supposing a person has been very promiscuous and they have gotten venereal disease. Supposing the Lord Jesus Christ touches that person and their body is cleansed of every part of that disease. And then if they were to go out and get involved again, no wonder then Jesus would say, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Are you following me? There is much knowledge today regarding that little thing so long, how it affects the lungs. And there are many who really are desiring to get over the habit of smoking because they know it's, it's hurting their own body. And I also had no, a, a perfect example of a woman who was healed instantly. The habit left her instantly. She came to Christ, she gave her life to Christ. She was a miracle of healing. She, the, the desire was completely gone. And she did the same thing as the man who had been drinking. Just one puff, just one puff, that's all I want. Won't hurt, just want to taste it again. She did. And then the next puff, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And let me tell you, she then came into the church again to try to find deliverance. And she asked for prayer and asked for prayer and asked for prayer. And you know, she had a great problem at that point. She didn't get rid of it easy again. It wasn't an instant healing again. She had to fight that thing and fight it and fight it and fight it and fight it. And the next time it was almost hell on earth to try to get over that habit. Are you following me? You get in the picture? So I think what we ought to do is, because God has given us the word of knowledge, we ought to get at the root cause of why a person is sick. To me, it isn't just all, you know, lay hands on somebody and poof, now you're healed. Sometimes there are many things going on on the inside of a person that need healing first, and that's why I want to go into some inner healing here too. I think uh, we ought to look at uh, John chapter 9, in connection with this and see what it says here because here is a man who has been healed and uh, look what Jesus says about this man and as Jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind and Jesus answered neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So you see, here is a man that's born blind, and Jesus said, look, it wasn't the man himself didn't sin, neither did the parents sin. But rather now we see that God wanted to manifest his glory. The same reason is when people get sick and they have diseases, or afflictions, or they've got broken bones, or whatever the case is, and you minister to that person, it isn't necessarily as a result of sin in that life. No different than here. You are wanting now at that point to manifest the glory of God to see that body healed. And Jesus always looked at the problem the way it was. He was as sane and as poised and as sensible. If we could conduct ourselves as Jesus conducted himself and use those gifts of the Spirit as he did, we could move amongst those who are in the know, in the knowledge. Jesus performed miracles in front of the specialists in their field. And he was never scorned upon or looked upon as somebody who was, who was being irrational. They were amazed at what he was doing. 
and they knew that people were being healed, but he sure had a lot up here. I trust you'll come back and join us next time as we share some more with you.